Hey, how goes it everyone? This is Romerit bringing you back to Kingdom Hearts. Now, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 is, is just around the corner, and we know that that includes a short movie called Kingdom Hearts Back Cover. And for those who do not know about the uh, mobile game, Kingdom Hearts Unchained X, Back Cover goes into more depth about the story of the mobile game Unchained X. That is a free game that I've had a few videos about, and so what I wanted to do is take this opportunity to talk about Unchained X and the story to get people a better idea for those who haven't played it so that we have a better idea as to what back cover will entail. So Kingdom Hearts Unchained X is the mobile adaptation of Kingdom Hearts that because we know Square Enix never makes a game unintentionally is tied to the Kingdom Hearts storyline. It is actually the earliest Kingdom Hearts storyline chronologically wise. It used to be Birth by Sleep but this goes even before that and it discusses what most people believe to be the beginning of the Keyblade War. Now, it starts at the beginning, if you've seen the uh, trailers about back cover, you see that there are a various amount of people standing with animal masks. These are known as the Foretellers, and they are what you consider masters of Keyblade wielding. There are different clans, or guilds as the game calls it, um, the Ursus, Angus, Unicornus, Volpus, and Leopardus being the five guilds you can choose from. You actually starting up the game you uh, choose which one you want to be affiliated with and that is just associated with weekly rankings as well as um, points and collection of lux in the Kingdom Hearts Unchained X game. So each union is led by one of these Keyblade Masters known as the Foretellers, those in the masks and the robes. And what we understand is that there are five according to the game and according to those that we see in the trailer. But the sixth one, the one they interact with, is a sixth student that seems to be some sort of um, traitor. Or he is often referred to as him or dark one, things like that in various cutscenes that I've come across. But what we understand about their past is the four tellers used to be under one master and they were spoken about this book of prophecies and the book of prophecies related to things that are to come in the future as the name would say or suggest uh, the last page talking about some sort of war and the quote being the war in that place will lead to the defeat and the destruction of light the world will be enveloped in eternal darkness four tellers get together and they basically say after reading this passage about the war leading to darkness that they need to do something about it, they want to prevent that. So they start gathering Keyblade wielders, and that is you as a character, as you create your own avatar and you're considered a Keyblade wielder, and you are tasked when you join one of these unions to start collecting light in the form of Lux, L-U-X. And that can be done through different quests, through different um, events, things like that, in the game that they actually make collecting Lux a competition. And that actually goes into the storyline where originally the idea was to prevent the war from happening, things kind of take a turn for the worse. People lose sight of that role. The Keyblade wielders that are within the uh, Union themselves but are not the Foretellers don't necessarily know why they're doing this. They're just told to collect Lux. And it becomes a com competition. People stop being friends towards each other. And darkness always finds a way to creep in. So enter Chirithi. Chirithi is this stuffed animal-like appearance uh, character that follows you around is kind of like your Jiminy Cricket, your guiding light, uh, the one to keep you on track and keep you away from the darkness to protect you from the darkness. After a while, find out more about him in that he is actually a dream eater. There is a short cutscene in the game when you're playing around, along the story quest where you see him actually jump up and hug you, your character, and you see the little dream eater icon appear. Every player has their own Chirithi and they are closely connected to this Dream Eater Chirithi. And it is also noted that various Chirithis will change color and change attitude depending on the player's action in the storyline. My Chirithi um, seems to always be around the light color, whereas it has on a few cutscenes shown a darker Chirithi and one that has even disappeared as a Dream Eater disappearing because its player made wrong choices or choices that were oriented towards darkness. Round quest three or four hundred, you're actually introduced to a character named Emphimera, which is a um, 
an AI character in the story that has his theories. He's starting to come towards the truth of it all, and he believes that the world and the people that you've been meeting are fake, and that there's some sort of simulation that the unions are using to against Keyblade wielders to just be Lux collecting machines. And so he teams up with your character, your avatar, and starts to look for answers. So they go to the tower, they go to the sewage system, and try to figure out the truth behind it all. Um, uh, eventually, they try to meet up again, these two characters, but your um, friend disappears. And in order to pursue him, you run into Master Ava, which is the Vulpus Union foreteller, and she ends up being a mini boss battle and starts to discuss with Chirithi while you're sleeping what happened to your friend Emphimera. It turns out that Emphimera was actually transported to another plane called the Unchained. Unchained, hence the name of the game. And he is attempting to communicate with you through dream communication because a lot of the time your friend Chirithri is actually communicating as a dream leader through dreams. So Ava asks Chirithri if, if Chirithri was the one that sent the dream to you, the character, and it turns out he was not, which makes her wonder if the person in darkness, known as he, and likely the sixth student that fell out of the other foretellers, was the one who was communicating, and it suggested that he is in this unchained realm doing so. With Emphirma gone now, you resort to contacting one of his previous friends called Skold. Skold is one of the former party members, and you and him work together in order to try to get in contact to the world of the Unchained in order to figure out what the truth is. And during this time, more tension actually starts to build up with the foretellers about preventing the war and how to use the Lux that they're collecting, that it becomes an all-out conflict, and you and Skold decide to sneak into the tower of the foretellers to find out the truth. In which, what happens is you're actually confronted by Master Ava again. And in this case, Master Ava fights you as an illusionary foreteller, and you are quickly dispatched. There's a period in time in which Master Ava gives Chirithi to give to you a bracelet which allows you to resist darkness and go into the realm of darkness. This is actually a trial that they are doing in order to form an elite group of Keyblade wielders known as the Dandelions. And these Keyblade wielders are selected for their resistance to darkness. The role of the Dandelions are to be Keyblade wielders to live on in the next world, assuming that there is a next world when this one ends. Those who remain in the world have no choice but to clash with each other in a Keyblade war. The end of the game as we know it so far for Unchained X describes how you have a choice. You and your friends Skold have the choice of either moving on to the Unchained, which is the new world as the old world is crumbling, as Dandelions, those who are able to resist darkness and be Keyblade wielders in the new world, or if you stay, you partake in the Keyblade War. I know that's a lot to follow, and it was a little bit difficult. Um, if anyone's really interested in the game, I highly recommend it. It is a slower paced game, it's a phone app, they, um, Square Enix wants uh, it to be playable for a long period of time. As is anything that they do with the Kingdom Hearts franchise, there's always bits and pieces of story along with it, and it is rather enjoyable as well. So that is my discussion of the storyline of Kingdom Hearts Unchained X, and I'm really looking forward to the back cover movie when it comes out. Hopefully that helps explain some things for those who are not playing Unchained X and need to understand uh, what is going on with all these foretellers and all these characters. So thank you very much for watching, and as always, take it easy.